In an old house, an old woman gathers her knitting supplies. This is a special project for a little boy named Tommy she loves dearly. She knits furiously, and soon the mix of cotton, synthetic fiber, and cloth of every color turn from raw materials into something else. A teddy bear. She puts the finishing touches on the bear. This is a very special bear, after all. And sends the patchwork bear off to its destination with a red Get Well card. The card is labeled Kairos the Bear, and inside she writes a personal note. To Tommy, because only time can mend all wounds. Love, Grammy. But this package of love would never reach its destination. SCP-2295 was found at the site of a crashed mail truck, and it looks exactly like a standard handmade teddy bear, with one difference. On the left side of its chest, just under its jaunty tan bow, it wears a heart-shaped pin. But not a standard cartoon heart. This is a disturbingly realistic, anatomically correct pin of a heart organ. And that's because SCP-2295 has a specific purpose, and it's one that has everything to do with actual human organs. SCP-2295 spends most of its time completely inert, spending its days as just another cuddly stuffed toy. Tests performed on the toy revealed that it had no unusual properties, and seems to be a normal handmade keepsake. That is, until someone is injured in its presence. Not any injury will do. A paper cut or even a broken arm, for example, won't do much to activate its anomalous properties. But if it detects a critical injury to a human organ nearby, it will trigger a secret power. One that the Foundation is still trying to figure out how it works. Because SCP-2295 is a miracle worker. When it senses the presence of someone with a serious injury to an organ and is within two meters of them, SCP-2295 springs into action. Suddenly from unknown sources, the bear will produce objects including scissors, white thread, and sewing needles or a crocheting hook from its mouth. If there are any crafting supplies on hand, it will incorporate those as well. And then it gets to work. Despite only having hands made of fabric and stuffing with no fingers, the anomalous bear is still able to craft what will end up being a patchwork recreation of the damaged human's organ. Cute, if a little creepy, but that's just the beginning. The injured person mysteriously falls unconscious, and the patchwork organ, which the Foundation has designated as SCP-2295-1 instance, will disappear. The SCP-2295-1 instance will then physically replace the damaged organ inside the person's body. It's unknown how this happens. The patchwork organ will simply appear inside of their body, taking the place of the original lung or kidney, or whichever organ was failing. It's unknown where the original organ goes to, since it seems to just disappear as soon as the 2295-1 instance takes its place. Surprisingly, having this new cotton-stuffed heart or liver does not seem to cause any harm, and in fact it works exactly like the real thing. There are never any of the usual issues that come with a transplant, like the risk of it being rejected by the body, as the organic tissue seems to have no issue connecting with the organ and treating it like it was there all along. In all instances of SCP-2295 performing this adorable but rudimentary surgery, the subjects have made a full and complete recovery. SCP-2295 might sound like a miracle worker, but that isn't to say that its abilities aren't without their own set of complications. When faced with two injured subjects, SCP-2295 seems to always gravitate towards fixing the younger subject up first, maybe owing to its creation by a grandmother who wanted to heal whatever was ailing her grandson. No one knows who Tommy was or exactly what disease or injury he was recovering from, but his grandmother clearly felt it was serious enough to create this special bear for him. While SCP-2295 will heal anyone, it seems to be primarily a guardian for the young, and it takes its duties very seriously, even to the point of self-sacrifice. While SCP-2295 is able to pull some of its supplies out of thin air, it still always needs some raw materials to craft the new organ, including fabric and stuffing. And if there are none available, SCP-2295 will obtain them the hard way. The patchwork bear will sacrifice its own body, tearing itself open and removing any fabric or stuffing it needs without any concern for its own well-being. In order to craft a new organ for its patient, it slowly regenerates its own stuffing at the rate of around a gram of stuffing per day. 
but it needs to harvest fabric to repair its outer layer, which the foundation happily makes available to it, offering it a variety of patterns and types. It's no surprise that a teddy bear capable of healing mortal wounds would be of great interest to the SCP Foundation, and as soon as it was recovered from the crash mail truck, they immediately began tests to find out more about it. Could it heal literally any organ? Were there any limits to its abilities? There was only one way to find out, and the Foundation had the perfect test subjects, D-Class personnel, whose interactions with non-cuddly teddy bear SCPs frequently left them with critical external and internal injuries. The first test subject brought in, D-2353, a 38-year-old man who was in poor health not due to his work as a D-Class personnel but from his years and years of heavy smoking. His lungs were seriously damaged, which gave him trouble breathing and made any serious physical exertion extremely difficult. He wasn't critically injured or in danger of dying immediately, but that didn't matter to SCP-2295. D-2353 quickly passed out, and the bear sprang into action. It proceeded to take two textile swatches, one black and one red, and create a pair of fabric lungs which it installed in the patient. When he awoke, D-2353 found he had full healthy lung function again, as if he never picked up his deadly habit. But now the Foundation researchers needed to know how SCP-2295 would do with even more complicated ailments. D-3542 was 50 years old and his heart was not in good shape. Not only did he have a serious case of atherosclerosis, which is a disease where cholesterol plaque builds up and blocks blood flow and can put you at serious risk of a heart attack, but he also had an irregular heartbeat. This D-Class was in bad shape, but that was no problem for SCP-2295, who took a collection of different colors of yarn and a crochet hook and created a plushy heart. Just like the lungs had acted as if they were completely regular organs, after the heart anomalously ended up inside the man's chest, it began to beat normally and performed all the complicated functions of a human heart. But there was one detail that shocked the onlooking doctors. Before the yarn organ had vanished, the doctors had seen that it was beating. So is there any organ that SCP-2295 can't replace? That was about to be tested when D-7894 was brought in. A 24-year-old woman, she had suffered serious burns all over her torso, left abdomen, and right leg. She was brought in and sedated to numb the agonizing pain, and researchers were worried that they had come up against the limit of SCP-2295's abilities, since the skin is the largest organ after all. But SCP-2295 wasn't phased at all. The bear immediately started sewing segments of patchwork fabric and layering them onto the damaged skin, replacing the dermis and epidermis layer by layer. Unlike the other cases, these replacement organs are visible, and D-7894 now has patchwork skin, just like her talented surgeon. And amazingly, the fabric has the same sense of touch that her regular skin did. The final test of SCP-2295's abilities came with D-2723, who was only 18 years old. This last-minute D-Class test was performed because he was showing signs of severe cerebral hemorrhage, the kind that would cause brain damage in only minutes, and would be followed soon after by complete brain death. SCP-2295 sprung to life, but as soon as it examined the test subject, it became distressed. It started frantically grasping at random material around it, as if it didn't know what to do with them. Then it reached inside itself and provided a large chocolate bar, which it offered to the subject, sadly to no effect. It then seemed to admit defeat as it grabbed tightly onto the subject's leg. Observers reported that it was leaking a tear-like solution from its small knitted eyes as it embraced the dying D-Class in his final moments. Sadly, it seems that the human brain is the one mystery that even SCP-2295 can't solve. SCP-2295 appears to pose no threat to anyone and was classified as safe after testing. It is inactive when not in the presence of an injured person, and has never displayed hostile instincts when active. The Foundation determined that it should be stored in a standard containment locker in Site-37, where it can be kept safely until it's needed for tests or to repair an injured SCP personnel. Access is limited to those with level 3 or higher security clearance, 
and any contact with the bear is highly regulated. But there is one element of SCP-2295's existence that continues to worry Foundation staff. SCP-2295's full origins and the grandmother who crafted it are unknown. The note it was found with is the only clue as to where it may have come from, but there are plenty within the Foundation who are suspicious of the veracity of this letter, and they have good reason not to be too trusting. Because another bear with similar abilities exists, and it is distinctly less benevolent than SCP-2295. SCP-1048 is also a teddy bear, but it is capable of moving on its own and communicating through gestures at all times. It was initially allowed to wander around independently, and seemed to make its home at Site-24 a happier place, but then it began to display its own crafting abilities. SCP-1048 is able to craft duplicates of itself, and while the original was seemingly harmless, the ones it made were not. These similarly shaped bears were made of disturbing materials and were extremely hostile towards any humans they encountered. The first, SCP-1048-A, was made entirely out of human ears, and when it shrieked, it caused anyone nearby to generate ear-like growths all over their bodies, eventually causing them to suffocate. The creature disappeared, and an on-site researcher was found to be missing an ear. The creations of SCP-1048 only got stranger and deadlier from there. SCP-1048-B was found in the site's cafeteria, where it was moving around in a halted, jerky fashion. It then started bursting at the seams and revealed what appeared to be a human fetus inside. When the creature screamed, it sounded like a much louder version of a human infant, and its crows caused massive internal damage to anyone around it. SCP-1048-B was killed in the ensuing conflict with Foundation agents, ending its threat. But SCP-1048 was learning deadlier techniques. When SCP-1048-C was discovered, it looked to be a teddy bear made entirely out of rusty scrap metal. When it was spotted by Dr. Carver and targeted by Foundation personnel, the creature turned violent and proved to have incredible strength. Jumping through the agents who were trying to neutralize it, tearing through their bodies like tissue paper. Attempts to damage it were unsuccessful, and both it and the bear made out of ears are still on the loose along with the original SCP-1048. Capturing it is major priority for the Foundation, because no one wants to see what it will create next. Is there a connection between these two very different mm -hmm. teddy bears? No one has been able to answer this question. The origins of SCP-1048 are unknown, and so is any connection to the mysterious grandmother, who may have made Kairos the bear. But their abilities are similar, with both able to craft living objects out of seemingly any material. They just have very different ideas as to what a good use of their crafting abilities are. It is fortunate that an anomaly as potentially powerful as SCP-2295 seems to only want one thing, to help those in need, especially those who are the most vulnerable. For more on another Everybody wants to rule.